I like to think of simple concepts that could help you because they help me. And what I'm about to say might sound silly, but I think it'll be something you can put in your toolkit, your developer toolkit. Have you ever thought of how a movie star memorizes their lines? Well, an actor or an actress, they have different techniques. One thing they do is they'll imagine their scene as a room. So in their mind, they'll walk into a room and they'll imagine objects and associate those objects with the lines in their scene. For example, if there was an actor and he had a line that was, I'll never forget my daughter riding down Maple Avenue, the smile on her face, riding into the sunset. So in the actor's mind, he can open a door, walk into a room, and he can see some objects. He can see a photo framed with a picture of his daughter. He can see a red bicycle with a maple leaf hanging from the handles. He could see a bright sun. So those objects are associated now with his lines that he had to memorize. In the end, he doesn't have to memorize every single word, every single syllable, but instead he can associate a scene of objects with the lines he has to know. So how do we do that in code? I want to talk to you about making code make sense to you. Well, I have some code here. And I'll be honest, I'm kind of lazy, so I didn't want to write it out on a whiteboard. But you'll see right here, there's an if condition. And let's start with that. Just ignore all of the syntax. I'll get to that in a second. And right here on my tablet, you can see all these wonderful colors. If we take the object of a monster, there he is right there, that red and yellow monster. And we associate that with the if statement. So the if statement is the monster. If the condition is true, we want to feed the monster. I have the plate and the fork, steak and eggs right there. So we can feed the monster if the condition is true. Else, the monster goes hungry. Just taking that simple concept, you could associate that idea with the syntax. So when you're in a large code base and you have a thousand things to remember, you can now have something click into your mind fast. So right here, we have if params once audition. So in our code, say we have a UI. Would you like to audition? There's a radio button for yes and a radio for no. And we have a param on the back end, once audition. I just abbreviated AUD instead of writing all that out. So right here, if params, once audition, if these have a value on the back end, if there's something filled out, right? If there's a value that the user presses yes or no, then we continue. Now we have a return if performer has auditioned. So say we want to only have new talent. So that return, just like the if statement we 
associate the object as a monster. The return means stop if performer has auditioned. If they've already auditioned before, everything below is not executed, right? It isn't ran. So that means we want new talent. So we send a service, performer mailer, a method audition accepted email, we pass the performer object, and we have that trigger function deliver now. But on the return or the stop, you can imagine, say it's the monster's mom, saying you haven't eaten your vegetables yet, you can't continue, you can't eat what's under here. Remember right here? If the condition is true, feed the monster. So if these params exist in our update method in our controller, once that's uh, submitted, if they checked yes or no, if something exists, then we can continue if the performer has auditioned, or I'm sorry, stop if performer has auditioned. So we could continue with new talent because they haven't auditioned yet. So they can continue past that check, right? So this is a way to associate simply the monster object with the if statement. Another thing is, say you have a buy bug in your ERB file. Now, you don't need this clown hat right here. Pretend uh, that's gone, and that's gone on that side. If it just says buy bug, you could have that, you know, in your controller, just uh, just saying buy bug in there if you wanted. But in an ERB file embedded Ruby, we have to have the clown hat there. Now, another way you could look at it is that buy bug needs armor in order for you to go into battle. So this right here, these symbols on the left and right, that's the armor. And think of uh, Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Remember Saturday morning cartoons? Long time ago. They, they've been going for a long time. But anyhow, pretend that Bybug has to morph into a ranger so that armor that symbol, that clown hat, that's the armor it has. So once it morphs, it can go into battle. And how do you go into battle? Well, once that code is uh, ran and you're in your UI, you can bring up the Rails terminal. You go to the battle arena, the Rails terminal, where there are uh, logs, server logs, right? And it's going to have all this code once you enter the buy bug and then you can uh, inspect things. You could say performer dot valid something like that and so you can basically pull out your sword of Zordon whatever your uh, weapons are and so you can imagine attaching the Power Ranger object to your buy bug. That's the armor. And then you have to go into battle. The arena, the battle arena, is the Rails terminal where the server logs show, or the Rails logs show. So those are just a couple of things to really get code to click and also kind of fun. Um, you don't always have to go... Uh, line by line, uh, all the rules, all the syntax. Because like I said, once you get into a large code base, you'll be expected to find out where things are located, where they originate, and you can't just memorize everything. It doesn't work that way. You learn concepts. I hope that helped you. Think of what things you can come up with, put it in the comments and let me know. Also let me know if you have any questions or um, ideas that you would like me to go over. 
please don't forget to subscribe, like the video. Also, my kitchen, let's give an update on my kitchen. The dishes are still here from last time. You'll notice I wash all my dishes off. I don't have a dishwasher. So they kind of just stay there and uh, until I run out of them. Um, so I got to do better on that. But I don't have a dishwasher, so it takes a long time to wash them by hand. Uh, this I cooked in today, and this was like from a few days ago as well. And all this food over here, I'm organizing my pantry, reorganizing it. So I think I'm going to put my like pastas here, lentils, sauces, uh, canned meats, canned tuna, all that good stuff right here. And then I'll finally get my kitchen cleaned up. But yeah, honestly, I've been lazy with it. And uh, I'd rather, uh, you know, get into coding books and things like that. Um, something I'll talk about next, I think, is don't waste money uh, when you're a software engineer. So I'll have some stories coming up on how I wasted money in the stock market, how I could be further ahead. But one of my goals is to save $100,000 within two years, uh, give or take. Um, I'll just be frank with you. I'm up to about, what, 23000 right now. Um, started with seven grand, and So I basically have my emergency fund set. And uh, I'm not where I want to be, but you know I definitely want to get there. It's not impossible especially with the economy and uh, things happening. Yes, there's some rough times. Uh, I definitely have been there. Um, you know, in the past, a long time ago, I've had food stamps. I've been in government housing. Um, but anyhow, um, I just want to share some of my life with you to help encourage you. And that's about it right now. Thank you for watching. This is Coding Mountain Man.